Okay. Okay. Uh, I think we we better start now. It's still one minute, but that's okay. We can start now. Uh, okay. Cool. I think um, all of the students already come. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, give me a second. All right. Yeah. I I will make an introduction. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. You you may start okay. now. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello everyone. Hello semua. Uh, today is special day because uh, we have a special guest from Malaysia and uh, please uh, welcome uh, how can I how can I pronounce your name that's the problem <laughs> yeah call me King Kun King Kun okay yeah, yeah please know. welcome Dr. Yeah, don't King worry. Kun <laughs> and he's the head of postgraduate studies at UCSI universities and uh, he received his undergraduate degree from UTM in Malaysia and then his master degree from Oxford Brookes University UK and uh, his PhD was from uh, NUS Singapore and uh, this this lecture is basically from uh, his present book Bajautopia. It's about the suku Bajau. And please, uh, over to you, Ken. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, a very good morning, um, everyone. Um, a, a special thanks to um, Dr. Opita for your invitation. Um, I, I'm really glad to, um, you know, share some of the insight that we learned from um, this uh, basically is a studio project uh, that we did back to um, 2020, right? Um, so that that really, um, you know, so I will come across a lot um, to, to, to that later on. Um, yeah, let me share screen and we should start then. Oh, wait, um, I shall share the sound. Okay. All right. Okay. Um. So now. Um. That. Um. So basically, this is a, a studio project that we did. Um. Back in um twenty twenty, and um afterward, we are putting together as an edited volume, and it was published. Um last year, right? So it will take another like uh, one year after that um, to put as, a, as, a, as a, a book publication, right? So um, it, was, it was fascinating, you know, today um, to share with you, not only uh, particularly the books, but, um, you know, as an architecture student, I will also share with um, some of the uh, design processes and um, the kind of experiences that we learned through, um, you know, uh, in this, uh, design project right now so as you can see on this um you know the the introductions uh, page um the title for today talk um is tales of borneo sea nomad envisioning architecture narrative and imagination now it wasn't uh, exactly um the title for the books right but this is something i'm 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 uh, trying to adjust um for the talk today right now um borneo you know as we know it has been within the, the region um, that has been, um, you have a Malaysian Borneo and also you have Indonesian Borneo, right? Yeah. And, you know, um, recently one of the hot topic would be um, the relocation of um, your, um, you know, the capital city to the Kalimantan, the West Kalimantan, right? Now, so um, it has been a lot of going on, um, you know, in Borneo. But of course, when you look into um, a kind of a scholarship, right? Um, in the past twenty or, or twenty or thirty years, um, now I'm sure that you will find a very specific group of people who are very much on Borneo study, right? Um, so Borneo study, I would, I, in in my you know in my understanding, it has been something very rooted in in the discipline of anthropologists, uh, especially, right? And because um, due to the the kind of diverse society and a different tribe people. Uh, living there so you like really you know the, the society is not homogeneous you have like so many different land people sea people you know uh, um, um, 
you know, basically they are they are a, a diverse group of um, the in indigenous people, right? Now, so something that uh, really take um, uh, get our our attention is um, we has been um, knowing, you know, the different uh, indigenous people, especially in Sarawak and Sabah, right? And uh, we has been fascinating to looking at um, the kind of um, uh, the human subject, right? The human subject of the people. So uh, the, the way that how we structure the, the design studio, it wasn't really much started from um, the environment or the issue, but we rather interested about the human subject, you know, which is uh, the person, the people, right? Um, so we, we then branch out into um, a, a different theme of research, um, particularly looking at their lifestyle, uh, their environmental challenges, as well as you know a political debate um, around uh, the society, right? Um, now, so what uh, you would expect uh, to listen in the next one hour or so, um, I will be basically go through um, the books, right? So I will be uh, talking through some of the content, right? That um, in, in the book, but you know, of course I couldn't really go page by page, but I have selected, um, you know, some, some, some part of the content, which I think is a significant and is also, you know, for your interest as the architecture student, um, we can actually share ideas about how do we curate, uh, you know, how, how do we structure a narrative? How do we um, uh, manipulate the ideas, right? So I think that would be uh, quite helpful um, to, um, you know, especially to the student over here, right? Now, um, so go back to the um, envisioning architectural narrative and imagination. Now, very often when we look at the, um, you know, the kind of social issues and political issue over indigenous uh, community. Um, now, something immediately is that um, we know it's not really an architectural issue, right? Because you have a lot to do with human rights. You have to do a lot with, you know, the kind of um, uh, uh, dispute, you know, over time, the history of, of the place. Now, however, we think, you know, as an architect, as, as an architecture student, right? Now we do have a say, we can actually contribute the ideas um, and, um, you know, through our imagination and through the way that how we perceive um, the relationship between the human and the environment, perhaps, you know, uh, from architecture perspective, we can give a new perspective, right? Uh, and a lot of these things, or those, you know, we know is a speculating, right? We are speculating into their futures uh, development and also um, the kind of um, ideology, right? But, but for us, our, our standing is that um, it's important. It's important to have the imagination uh, in order to, you know, to, to begin the dialogue, right? Because sometimes if you are, you have, you have been, you know, struggle into, into, the, into the issue for so long, um, and one way to get a new idea is looking really, you know, jump out from the present issue, but really forecasting into the future, right? So that, I think, you know, is, is the task, um, especially for architecture or the architectural um, professional who we are, we are certainly have the skill and also um, the knowledge, right, um, to, to bring the narrative uh, forward, right? Yeah, so that is kind of, you know, um, um, mm, uh, sketch, you know, the whole, um, the whole idea behind the book, right? Now looking, so um, yeah, so basically this is a book cover. Now I will come back to that uh, later on in, in, in this book. If you are interested, um, yeah, we can, we can, I can, I can provide the information for you. Um, so, so we are very honest, right? Uh, we are very honest that um, we, after we completing the design studio back in 2020, and uh, we found, you know, the student work is um, exceptional, very high quality. And during our external review, um, a lot of the guest uh, panelists, they has been comment, um, commentable to our student work. And we find the kind of debate is important uh, to bring into the next level um, of, you know, uh, creating some impact to the society because we don't want the work just keeping, you know, within the school. And we think um, uh, a lot of the finding, the research uh, could actually be published into a, you know, into a, um, into a book, which, you know, the general public could also read about the subject matter, right? 
Um, so the, the idea behind this book is that it wasn't really uh, purely about architectural um, work because um, the intention, we want to make this book as um, public as possible, right? So any layman, you know, lay people, you pick up the book, you can also read uh, about it, right? So we have toned down a little bit on, you know, the jargon, the kind of very architectural term, but make this book is readable for a general public, right? Um, and, in, and, and we are very grateful as well because we have invited about um, uh, another eight uh, author who are also a very established scholar in the subject of uh, Bajau, uh, Bajau Lao community, right? So this book is not really purely on architecture because we have um, the essay contributor uh, from history, from political science, um, you know, from, from tourism, a different uh, perspective that we are trying to put together, right? So, um, so to give, you know, the kind of celebrating a different um, ideas, right? From, uh, from the different background of the scholar, right? Yeah, um, now over here, um, uh, it just, you know, kind of show you how, how um, the illustration that, that we're putting up um, as, as a whole. Um, now over here, I, I would like to just read out um, one of the, um, one of the testimony yeah, that written by uh, Dr. Um, Chia Hui Chang uh, from the NUS. I think that actually a very, very precisely capture some reflection on the books, right? So I, I just read out from here. How can we embrace maritime mobility in island Southeast Asia today? What kinds of shelter and settlement can right the wrongs of the Bajalao past marginal, uh, marginalization and exclusion? How can we begin to envision a better future for them in a world of climate change, rising seawater levels, and increasing precarity? By attempting to construct a utopian future for the Bajalaut, Bajautopia immediately suggests pathway for their betterment while also challenging land-based conception of the community. Right now, so um, back to the title of the book, Bajautopia is exactly a combination of two terms, Bajau, which is, you know, the name we call um, um, the indigenous people and a utopian, right? Now, I think the ideas of utopia or utopian ideas, ideology is not alien to architecture students, right? So we architect are very much, you know, um, making the utopia, right? Making, um, you know, imagining um, a society, you know, for the betterment. Right, so that really about a future imagination um, by looking at the community, right? So another key um, term, uh, another key point um, that actually mentioned by um, Dr. Chek Hui is um, land versus sea, right? Now, a lot of time when in a modern society, at least, you know, when we talk about development, we talk about, you know, the kind of welfare, we are very much looking at land-based development, right? Because our city, our settlement are basically land-based, right? Now, what about in a sea, <laughs> you know? So it gives another uh, territories of um, um, another site, you know, totally different from a land-based um, idea. And how can we imagining a society or settlement uh, to be happen on a sea, right? Which is, you know, back to the nature of Bajau Laut, who are actually a sea nomad, right? So their life have been living on the sea, right? So they are not land people, they are sea people, right? So with this, I think um, it, it's really bring a lot of reflection, uh, uh, a point that for us to think upon um, how, uh, so, so the, 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 the issue over here is not only for the Bajau Laut, right? So it's also a lot of question asking our modern society, right? Our contemporary society, how do we perceive uh, sea-based development? How do we perceive um, you know, the kind of uh, marginalization, right? Because um, these people are the stateless people, you know, they don't, they don't have the IC, right? They don't have the identity card. They don't have birth certificate, right? So that, there's a lot of reflection going on, right? Now I will come, come, you know, I will go in detail later on, right? Now, so with this, um, yeah, so I, I just give a very brief uh, introduction, perhaps, you know, uh, if, now, of course, you know, I, 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 um, I, I actually, I, I told Opita that um, for the talk today, I'm not going into the very in-depth 
um, history, you know, discussion about this group of people, right? Because I, I would like to focus more into the discussion of the design. Uh, but over here, I just give you a very brief uh, background uh, of the community, right? Now, in terms of their origin, now there has been in the region, especially um, in the Sulo, Sulo Sea, right? A Sulo Sea region uh, across Borneo, Philippines, and even, you know, some of the archaeological work has been shown. Um, the, the people also uh, moving around to Australia and New Zealand, right? So this is, a, this is such a, a big maritime territory where the Bajalao people are actually constantly moving, right? So they are nomad, yeah? They are having a nomadic lifestyle. They are not permanently stay in one stop, right? They are, they are, moving, they are moving people. Now, so in terms of the origin, the Bajalao were one of the major maritime community in ancient Southeast Asia. They has been 100,000 of years, right? Now we know the Sulu Kingdom um, has been, you know, um, back in three, uh, back in, you know, a, a few centuries back. So all the Bajalao people is actually the servant for the kingdom, right? So they are actually serving um, the Sulu Kingdom, uh, the, the Sultan of Sulu. Right. So their habitat and maritime mobility can be traced across the Sulu Sea, Borneo Island, the Celebes Sea, and the Sea of Northern Australia and New Zealand. Right. Um, so, so they are really uh, you know, highly mobile uh, across the island and in the, in the region. Right. So, they, they, uh, so in other words, you know, people also call them as a sea people, yeah? Olang Laut. Uh, but, but now, over here, um, you, have to, you have to distinguish Olang Lao and Bajo Lao. Eh? Now, Olang Lao, we know that um, in like in uh, Johor Strait and Batam, Bintan, you know, uh, there is another tribe we call Orang Baja, uh, Orang Lao, right? But Baja Lao wasn't the same same tribe, yeah. So they are different different group. Um, yeah, but they are also very much similar in terms of the lifestyle because their life, you know, very much dependent on the sea resources, right? And they are living in the boat house as well. Yeah. Okay. Now. Um, in terms of their identity, it's very conflicting um, issue and it's remained unresolved until now, right? Now, the status of the stateless Abajau was defined primarily by the boat drilling way of life, back their lack of independent claim. Today, the undocumented Bajau have to write, um, have no, sorry, there's a typo, have no right, yeah, have no right to healthcare, education, or social welfare and left in the political limbo rejected by the government of Malaysia, Indonesia, and Philippines, right? Now, um, this has been a long-standing issue. I think, you know, over a hundred of years since, you know, Malaysia become independent, Indonesia or uh, uh, Philippines become, you know, a modern um, independent state. Um, and until today, uh, very sadly, very unfortunately, um, this government, we are, we are still, you know, um, not really recognize um, this group of people, right, in terms of um, giving an identity uh, to them, right. Now, uh, of course, if you compare to Philippines, I think um, the Philippine government have started, um, you know, working with UN um, to initiate some of the uh, legalization process uh, to the people. But it's just a very small group of Baja Laut living in Philippines uh, who are getting, you know, uh, citizenship. But most of the uh, Baja Laut, um, they're based in Malaysia, Borneo. Um, there are some, there are a larger pro 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 proportion of this group of people are still stateless. Yeah? But of course, you, um, we, there are also a Baja Laut who are a citizen, right? Who, are, who have got the citizenship in Malaysia. But um, the point is here, there are still a lot of them who are not getting, um, you know, a proper citizenship. So something, um, you know, something very sad when we um, talk to, um, um, uh, because the boat is also working with one of the NGO, one of the non-governmental uh, uh, organization. It's called uh, Borneo Comrade, who are who um, offer a free education for the for the children, right? For the stateless children. Now, um, when we are having a um, a dialogue with Borneo Comrade, um, there, there's something you know we we can't imagine, right? How the people actually having the the issue because. Some of these, um, you know, the old folks or the or the um, the older generation, they don't even know that how old are they, right? Now I, I know that I'm uh, today, you know, this year I'm I'm thirty nine, and you know that you are twenty over, right? But many of them they don't even know like what what is today or what old because 
simply they don't have the birth certificate, right? Um, so that's that's undocumented. They they cannot access to all you know the the healthcare education and etc. Right. Um, yeah. So that is a lot of um, social political issues that are going on. Right. I remain unresolved. Right. Okay. Now, so over here, I give you just a very um, the kind of graphic presentation on um, the geography. Right. The geography of the people. Now, on what you see on your left is basically the Borneo. Right. Uh, the north, uh, north, north uh, Sabah, which is um, Sempona. Um, and Tawau, yeah, Tawau is the nearest airport. Um, now, Sempona has been, you know, like um, a, a paradigm um, for the scuba, scuba diving, right? So if you like the kind of sea, um, the kind of um, scuba diving activities, this has been known as one of the, uh, you know, one of the most popular amazing sport for scuba, scuba diving, right? But something, something um, ironic is that uh, when the tourists, you know, come to Sempona, go to the beautiful beaches, go to explore the beautiful, you know, underwater, all the island, right, all the, you know, five-star resort, but they, they, they kind of um, didn't really recognize um, the, the indigenous people, right, which is uh, the Bajalawat, right, and, um, and the Bajalawat wasn't really um, as part of the mainstream economy, right, um, so many of the time they're actually catching um, you know the the um, you know they're collecting the uh, resources like fishes you know all this uh, from from the sea and they just basically um, sell it to the middleman or you know sell the product to the to the to the tourists like randomly right um, so there, there wasn't any like a proper arrangement or a proper program that putting them into you know the whole um, tourist industry, right? So they are very much, you know, the people that at the border who can't really access to the, who can't really getting the benefit, right? From, from the tourism, right? Now over here, you will see um, there are many islands. Eh? There are many islands, uh, popular, popular island um, around the region. Um, so like Bombam Island, Omada Island, um, Bogaya Island. So these are all the amazing uh, spot for scuba diving. And all the way is stretching um, you know, uh, to your right, all the way to Philippines, yeah, to, to the Philippines, uh, to Bongo Island, to Sitakai Island, right? Now, why uh, this map is important? Because as I mentioned earlier, the Bajalao people, they are mobile, right? Um, they, they always refer their homeland, their ancestral land in Sitakai, which is in Philippines, yeah? Uh, although now they are living in Sabar, but... Um, if they trace back to their uh, the origin or their you know the kind of um, the the root of the, the community, they believe that they actually uh, come from you know came from a Sitakai Island, yeah. So it's over here, Sitakai Island, yeah. Now um, this become an um, issue that because recent because of this um, you know the nation state um, uh, between the Philippines and Malaysia, the people can no longer move freely across. The boundary, right? Because um, the police, you know, especially the the the, the marine police, will stop them because um, you you are crossing between a two country, uh, the border between two country. But however, for it is very unfair to them, yeah. Because back to their ancestral uh, practices, you know, their belief, they are actually they have to move, yeah. They have to move around. You cannot just keep them in one place because they are um, they are the people, you know, who are who are you know, a nomad, right? A nomad that moving uh, from one island to another island, right? Um, so the migration um, is, has been something, you know, as a modern term, right? For us, right? Migration, I migrate from one country to another country. But for Bajau Laut, it wasn't really, you know, the term, yeah? Because um, they see themselves is constantly moving, constantly moving from one island to another island, right? Um, so within the last 50 years, Many of the Bajau have migrated to Sempona, Sabah, and many of them now, you know, settle down in Sempona. Now, mostly are living in a boathouse, right? Now, if you trace back to their origin, they are living in a boathouse, right? Because um, they are nomad, right? So they, 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 they are not basically permanently settled in one spot. Um, so boathouse would actually, they are very unique heritage and also uh, the kind of lifestyle they were, they were actually living on that. So another term, the local term we call lepa, 
Yeah, Lepa meaning a uh, boathouse, right? But over the year, they started to build a water village with a simple wooden structure, um, which is based now in Sampona. Now, the reason being is that it's no longer economically viable for the people living in boathouse, right? Because uh, the sea resources has been uh, really lacking, right? Because with all the modern, um, you know, uh, fishing technique and also uh, the kind of uh, climate change issue, uh, the catches, right? The fish uh, catches has been decreasing uh, tremendously over the time. Um, and also it's very difficult to maintain the boathouse, right? Now, you have to imagine that over, you know, a last 50 or 70 years, um, they, are, they, are, they basically built the boathouse themselves, right? So one of the main resources is a wood, is a timber, right? So where do they collect the timber? It's from the nearby forest, right? Uh, they cut the, the tree and then build the boathouse. But over, over now, in a, in, a, in a current time, it's no longer viable to do so, right? Because partly, you know, all the forest has gone and there's also some, you know, government who are protecting uh, the resources, right? So one thing you have to think about the resources, they, they can't even get the wood, right, to build the, the boathouse. Now, another important point is that what I meant about uh, the control of the border, right? Because they can no longer move freely between Philippines and Malaysia uh, and Sabah. And therefore, you know, there's no point uh, for the people who actually living in a boathouse, right? Now, bear in mind that although, you know, it, it's illegal to cross between, you know, the border now today, but people still do that, yeah? Yeah, because when we talk to some of the scholar and the, and the NGO over there, um, some of the Bajala people, they still uh, travel, you know, between, but, you know, in, in, in a sense that sometimes, you know, the police um, also, like, you know, um, not really, uh, okay, like, depend on the luck. Lah. So sometimes the police actually um, don't, don't, don't bother them, right? So some of the, the, the they, they can still, you know, uh, go back to Philippines um, to, to visit their family, you know, or to their grandparents, or etc. right? Um, but with a very simple um, uh, boat, yeah? but with a simple, simple boat, they can still uh, moving around. Now, um, and, and something interesting about the, the climax over here, because we know that um, in, in this Sulu Sea, it's actually um, a very peace, a very safe um, zone, that um that do not affected by the by the annual um you know the kind of typhoon um season right so uh, the wind over here is rather very subtle um so all those that they are using a small boat uh, to travel you know between the island is still very much safe to do so right because it's it's, it's not under the typhoon zone uh, right um so they they do not uh, have that kind of very strong wind or you know the uh, or the very strong um, current, yeah, the, the wave. Uh, yeah, so that is also um, the, the unique about um, the place, right? Okay, so uh, what happened, right? So what happened when they are have no longer living on the boathouse, right? So over here, they have settled in Sampona, right? Which is a water village, right? Now, uh, the, 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 the Google map that show on your left is actually on your sorry, on your, on your, on your right is actually um, the, the location. Yeah? The location is very much the, the end of the island, right? Um, so it's between the sea and the land, right? Now over here is all the township. Yeah? It's a modern township with all the school, hospital. Um, yeah, this is what we call the, the town of Sampona, right? The Tampona town. Um, but at the end, approaching you know, toward the sea, it become a water village, right? So water village is, um, I mean, of course, you know, people are built illegally, right? So there's no, uh, people actually, this is like, you know, a, a more informal settlement, right? So people just build, you know, and, and stay there. Um, yeah, over here, uh, we, we do a sketches, right? So you will see like the, the water houses are very dynamic, right? So they, they build um, closely, one attaching to another because, you know, as structurally, right? So because these are all piling, right? They are using a simple like uh, a bakau, yeah, a bakau, the, the bakau wood uh, to do a simple piling, uh, and then they build the, the, the wooden structure, right? And uh, it's important to connect uh, one to another because it will give a structural strength, right? Um, uh, as a whole, right? If you only build one unit, you know, you might actually affecting by the weather, but when you we build, you know, together, 
it become you know uh, very strong right uh, so um and, and you will also notice that there's a lot of uh, these uh, bridges they are connecting uh, between the houses right so they they basically and then over here you will see also the boat right the fisherman boat um the kind of a small boat is also parked under their houses right so because they still need the boat to travel um to the sea and then to collect the sea resources right so it is very interesting right so the the, the water village is very unique and um you know many the tourism you know the tourists uh, will also visit um the village right um yeah so um now they they do have some very simple um infrastructure but there's no uh, of course you know there's no water pipeline they have to buy the water you know uh by by the container right so there's no um, water pipe there's no electricity so basically they are using the generator uh, to generate electricity right okay so this is uh, another uh, just a, a very um, illustration on the cultural mapping right so when you look at the site it's not only one particular you know location you have to think uh, more broadly into a you know into a white um into a white uh, uh section right so over here you will see that how um uh, it, it can give you an impression that um the kind of modern infrastructure <coughs> excuse me the structure is all over you know the, the one side yeah <coughs> yeah so over here you would have like the mosque right the school or the um the shop right um, which, which is like a very modern modern township, yeah. But um, on the on the southern part, there's also another archaeological site we call uh, Bukit Tengkorak, right? So it's another like the ancestral um uh, site uh, for for the for the Bajalau, right? Then over here, uh, when you move, you know, toward the sea, you will see uh, the things start happen, you know, more randomly and more informally, right? So there are people. Um, they are more like the kind of um, random structure, right? And then um, you will see also like the boat, right? Uh, the jetty, yeah, and the thing. Now, then when you're approaching to the sea, you will see all the water houses, yeah? The water houses, and there is a uh, one last patch of the mangrove, uh, a little mangrove land um, still exit uh, 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 on the side, all right? So all over here, you can see a lot of um, like the sea-based activities uh, where, you know, the, the Baja people are doing, right? So they are collecting, they're catching the fish, they are collecting uh, like the, the seaweed. They are also doing like a seaweed planting, right? Um, so, um, and, and they have uh, this uh, lepa festival, yeah? So over here you see uh, a beautiful decorated uh, lepa is uh, an annual event. So normally happen in April every year. Uh, all the people, they were, they were beautifully decorated their, their lepa and then uh, to showcase to the people, right? So there are dancers, there are a lot of beautiful, um, you know, the heritage, uh, the cultural act, uh, activities happen. Um, then over here, uh, there's a catcher. And also, we also highlight, you know, there are other uh, environmental issues, you know, such as um, the, 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 the trust, right? Um, the, all, the, all the rubbish, right? The, 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 the trusses. Um, and another thing is um, about the booming, right? So, there's another technique. It's a modern technique where they use the the boom, right? Um, to to actually, uh, we we call it like booming, right? So, um, it's actually try to catch the the fish, right? Um, uh, to group the fish and then they are they are catch in a in a large amount, right? So all these activities um has you know caused a very harmful uh impact to the to the environment, right? To the to the to the to the sea floor and also um to the to the people. Okay, so over here, uh, we also, the book also collaborated with uh, one of the uh, photographer um, is Eric, right? So Eric is uh, from Sweden, right? But he has been doing uh, his research uh, in across Philippines and, and Sabah, um, you know, around like two or three years. So we, 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 we are really grateful that um, he contributed amazing photograph um, to the book, right? Now, so over here, uh, it gives you some very, um, direct appreciation of the lifestyle of the people, right? So these are all the recent photograph, right? These are not old photo. Is to reveal to you um, the the life of the people currently, right? Now, so over here you see a kid, right? Uh, is still living in a boathouse, right? So this is like um, you know, um, the 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 current condition. 
Now, I must say that the life is very difficult, right? Because uh, you can see they don't access really to a clean water. They don't have, you know, a, 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 a stable um, a food supply, right? So everything have to be really depend on their catches, um, uh, their daily catches in the sea, and then they will they will sell it to uh, the the middle band or the the tourists, right? So it's it's really a life on the boat, uh, and then over here you will see also. Um, uh, so so the picture on your right is not in Sampona, it's in some of the remote islands. Yeah. So um, some of the Bajalawa they are prefer to live remotely. Uh, you know, they, they try to be remain their nomadic traditional lifestyle. They are still, uh, so those that living in, uh, you know, in Sampona, in over here, is, is the kind of more modern um, Bajalao, right? So the people that who, who, who prefer um, a modern living, right? Uh, so some of the people, they also work in a factory, you know, work in the nearby uh, industrial. So they are not, they has been born modernized, right? So they are not like uh, the kind of very traditional uh, bajalao, but some small group of bajalao they still prefer in a tra traditional way of life. So they they will they will live in uh, some of the remote island, right? So in the remote island, you can see their 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 house is rather simple, right? So it just with you know the kind of um, a few uh, steel, right? It's a steel house, and then the roof is basically with a with a um, the kind of atap, yeah, atap roof, uh, with all the all the natural resources. But in, in fact, you know, you can call this as a green architecture, right? So it's it's very sustainable. Uh, is you know, it's very minimalist. Uh, it doesn't cause you know like a very harmful impact to the environment. Yeah, so it it live very peacefully. Uh, together with the with the ocean, right? Yeah. Um, over here now they are marvelous. They are incredible diver, right? All Bajalao people. Since you know you are the young kids or you are the old folks, you know every every one of them, you know it's like a, a Olympic levels the kind of swimmer, right? They are diver. They don't have in any equipment. They can dive up to like ten or twelve meter without any instrument, right? So you can can you imagine they are incredible swimmer and and diver. Um. So because this is also one of their life skill. Uh, they have to collect, um, you know, the resources from from the sea, right? Um, so they, they have been really adapting um, to this kind of, of lifestyle, and um, there is a there's a, there's there has been many scientific research um, show a fact that um, they actually have you know um, a, a genetic uh, manipulation, right? So their lung actually is bigger uh, around ten percent to twenty percent than a normal land people, right? Because they, they, they have to really, you know, hold the brake, right, uh, under, underwater. So their lung actually is, uh, the size of the lung is, is bigger than the normal people as us, right? So it has gone through some uh, genetic um, um, evolution, right? Um, uh, so these are, you know, these are uh, the, the happy kids, right? They are, they are really enjoy their life and then their connection with the ocean is, is so much, you know, um, uh, close, right? Now, so these are some of the adult um, diver, yeah, can, can show you that they are using uh, a very simple equipment, right? So this is uh, what, um, you know, they, they call um, a, a spear gun, right? A spear gun meaning that it's a, it's a you know, it's a gun that um, connecting to a string, right? So when they shoot, um, the gun is pointing to, you know, to any, um, you know, fissure, right? And then they will actually pull the string uh, to catch, right? So the way that they do the fishing is in fact very sustainable. They are not over catching, right? So if you, you if you compare to the to the modern um, fish net, right? So the fish net will draw everything, will destroy um, the 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 coral and also the ocean floor, right? Uh, the sea floor. But by using this spear gun, it's actually very protecting environment. It also do not over consuming, right? Uh, so they would just catch enough amount uh, for the day, so they do not over catch, do not over, you know, uh, destroy uh, the environment. So it, it's very sustainable in, in fact, yeah. Um, yeah, so these are some of their traditional scale uh, who still, you know, practicing until today, right? So they are, they are still doing that. Now, but very sadly, uh, unfortunately, they are very, they have, you know, large uh, 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 amount of freedom, right? But free, uh, they, they are free, but also exploited. 
yeah because they are they have been marginalized by the by the modern society they have not really been part of the you know on the economic system right so meaning to say you know all the benefit from the tourism the, the kind of seafood uh, industrial they are a uh, end receiver right they are not a major player in this uh, system but they are very much you know at a marginalized uh, position um, so they have also struggled, you know, as, as we see, has been struggled for a lot of uh, the welfare, um, you know, the kind of human right issue that going around, right? But, you know, uh, we, we have to accept the point that their soul and their lifestyle cannot be separated from the ocean, right? They are the ocean, they are the sea people, right? Okay, now, so over here, uh, what makes um, something, you know, when, when we look back to some of the literature, that has been, you know, writing on Baja Laut. Um, now over here, I, I just, uh, you know, put up uh, two, um, you know, kind of insight that we learned from the literature, but I'm sure that you can find a lot more, um, you know, um, books, you know, on Baja Laut. Now over here, Barbara Watson and Daya. So I think many of you has uh, 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 read or, you know, come across uh, her work is a very, you know, astonishing, uh, well-established historian, especially in the region of Southeast Asia. Um, and um, recently, uh, Professor Barbara actually wrote um, a book chapter um, on the Bajalao people, right? So uh, the, the, the chapter called Recording the Past of People Without History, right? Southeast Asia Sea Nomad. Now, they are without history because they are undocumented. They are, you know, a marginalized uh, society. So they have, they have been perceived as the people without history, right? Be, be, without a civilization, yeah? But... It wasn't the truth, right? It wasn't the truth. Now over here, um, what Barbara um, uh, said, sea nomadism is now a misnomer as a standardary existence become the norm. While the descendants of maritime wanderers still live, uh, live uh, physically close to the sea and maintain a sea-oriented livelihood, questions might be posed about the way in which future generations will relate to the sea environment. Yeah. Now, so over here, we actually take an inspiration from, um, you know, from this paper is, you know, um, we, we cannot immediately solve all the existing problem, you know, like the political issue, the citizenship issue, there's no way to actually um, push the boundary, right? But perhaps um, we can, another important question to ask is what happened to the future generation, right? Um, so how could we imagining the future uh, for the people and also, you know, for us. Um, so that actually uh, try to give a lot more uh, freedom, you know, a space for us to, to debate or for us to find a solution, right? Now, so another um, also very important literature is from um, Carol Warren. So Carol Warren, um, uh, who, 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 who is actually an anthropologist and he did um, um, his PhD um, research uh, exactly in the in the site, right? So um, you can still find, um, you know, the dissertation is called Ideology, Identity and Change, the Experience of Bajalao of East Malaysia, right? So um, it's between 1969 to 1975, right? So it, the, the book was published in 1983, right? By their neighbor, Bajal will identify with two negatively value characteristics. Their boat living, nomadic way of life, and their animistic belief and practices. Now, um, many people often think, you know, Bajalao, they are, you know, they are, you know, they are kind of not a modern people, right? And then therefore people seem to have a lot of negative uh, perception on the Bajalao, right? So say, for example, they are living in the boat, right? So they are not, li not living in the houses, in a bungalow as us, you know, in an in a apartment, right? Uh, so we try to judge the people based on their lifestyle. Um, and, and secondly, is the nomad lifestyle, right? We, we often think like nomad people are more the kind of, you know, less modern, less civilized people. But is that the case, right? So it's a question. And their animistic belief, right? So a budget loud, they are animistic belief, right? So because uh, due to the fact that they have a, such a close relationship to the nature, right? So they, they believe in the kind of uh, sea spirit, the kind of uh, a lot of, uh, you know, the, the traditional... Uh, ritual, right? A ritual about um, their, their daily practices. So 
perhaps you know because some of this um uh, factor it, it make you know um, a lot of people think that they are you know they are very backward they are you know they are not modern people right and and also poverty yeah poverty they are poor yeah because no, you, you can't really see them as poor because this is basically their lifestyle, right? So how do you define rich and poor? It's also, you know, another interesting question. But of course, when you look from, you know, like a contemporary society, you look at them as a poor people, right? Uh, so you also define them as uncleanness, right? Because you see them, you know, uh, mandi, you know, koto, the kind of, you know, not a clean, um, you know, uh, like well-dressed people, yeah? Moral, pollution and uh, neighborhood or lack of intelligence, right? Now, these are some of the misunderstanding, right? Are associated trait typically attached to the subsistence people on the wrong side of the great tradition. Now, this is a key word. The wrong side of a great tradition, right? So Carol, Carol tried to say that we are just looking at the wrong side, right? Because we impose our value system we impose our judgment based on our modern value, right? Um, but in fact, you know, there is a great tradition, there is a great knowledge um, behind, you know, within the Bajau Lao people. Say, for example, the diving technique, right? Uh, and then their knowledge, their vernacular knowledge about the ocean, right? I'm sure that we have so much to learn from this community, but we often see on you know, the wrong side of this group of people. We do not really appreciate their talents, you know, their vernacular knowledge, their traditional knowledge, who can also, you know, very important contribute, you know, into, you know, our modern society, right? So uh, very sadly, right? So these are the, a lot of this misunderstanding on this group of people, yeah. Now, so by, by having this uh, kind of um, as a base, right? As an argument for the project. So we would like to take this further into the exploration. Now, um, I, I, because uh, from what I learned from Dr. Oficia, we know that um, the, the design studio that um, a lot of students who are doing now is actually on vernacular architecture, am I right? Yeah, so, um, so over here, I'm, I'll just share with you um, some of the, um, you know, some of the knowledge I've learned um, regarding the vernacular architecture. And of course, you know, when you look at Bachelorwood, you can also um, interpret the community as a vernacular, you know, um, architecture or vernacular um, um, uh, people, uh, which is fine. But over here, I would like to share with you um, some of the, um, you know, some of the argument on uh, vernacular architecture or vernacular built heritage, right? How do we proceed? Uh, how do we define vernacular? Now, Paul Oliver has been one of the, you know, a very um, pioneering um, scholar in uh, vernacular architecture. Uh, so when I was studying back in Oxford bro, um, now, uh, of course, you know, he, he, he passed away, I think back in uh, a few years back, but uh, very lucky when I studied at Oxford bro, I, 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 you know, I managed to attend his classes uh, and, and listen to his lecture, right? So uh, Paul Oliver has been one of the, you know, uh, a great scholar on uh, vernacular architecture. So in this book, Dealing, um, Dwelling, the House Around the World, um, Oliver argued that all houses are dwelling, but all dwelling are not houses, right? Because dwelling embrace unique locally based living tradition, which are entangled with the notion of con continuity and change, right? Um, so meaning to say, if the vernacular is not just a basic structure for living, right? Um, so why it's important to, to interpret vernacular, you know, as a dwelling, right? Because dwelling, is, you know, have to embrace with a lot of culture, with a lot of traditional value, uh, a lot of lifestyle, you know, a local culture within, um, you know, a built environment, right? Within a, a built structure. So, and also, um, you know, the, the fact that dwelling is, uh, is, is a term um, uh, that happen constantly change, right? So it's not static, yeah? So, uh, so it's important that, we, we do not see vernacular houses as static, yeah, but we, we, it's, it's, it's very dynamic, right? It's constantly changed. And um, the second, the second um, point over here uh, is from um, another, you know, the book from Asia Old Building, Tradition, Resilience and Change. A dwelling is not only served to be human habitat, but also as a witness of history, 
um, and evidence of indigenous culture, skill and craftsmanship, technology and environment wisdom of the people life, right? Yeah, so um, we cannot see just as the hardware, right? The, the, the outer side of the uh, dwelling, but we have to see the inner part, right? The intangible part of the dwelling, which is, you know, um, there's a skill and craftsmanship, there's a technology, there's an environmental wisdom uh, that reflect um, how the people live, you know, within um, the structure. And our last one uh, is actually from uh, Ashquish and uh, Marcel Valinga, who are also based in um, uh, Oxford Brook University. Um, so in this book, you know, if you are interested, I'm sure that many of you come across vernacular architecture in the 21st century theory, education and practice. We should recognize the vernacular dwelling are not remnant of a backward society. Yeah, so this is important. We do not try to romanticize um, the ideas of vernacular uh, houses. You know, uh, for you know, for the for the uh, for a mere purpose of conservation of protection. You know, but you know, sometimes because we see that ah, oh, they are so you know, they are so precious. You know, they are so uh, you know, we have to really protect them. Now, which is okay, but you have to respect um, how people are actually making their life, right? Because culture and vernacular building tradition have always been dynamic and changing, right? So they are not static, right? So um, now, so back into the point um, when we approaching the studio project with the Bajautopia project, uh, we also remind ourselves that they, these people are progressive, right? They are not static uh, community. So say, for example, the boat houses, um, you know, it's no longer viable for the people to live in the, you know, the kind of traditional boat houses, right? So their culture is actually changing, right? Because based on the, on the modern need and also the environmental challenge. Uh, so we cannot, you know, just simply make a, a proposal saying that, oh, okay, in order to revive their heritage, we have to put, you know, the, the people back to the boat houses, you know, to keep their very vernacular lifestyle, you know, but in fact, it's no longer... Uh, valid, right? It's no longer viable to do so, right? So we have to look into a modern way, a more creative way, um, how to revive the, the, the heritage, right? So later on, um, now keep, keep in mind some of this idea, uh, you, can, you can keep in mind now. Uh, so when I show you the example, uh, the, the proposal later on, you might be able to, to relate uh, this theory into the proposal later on, yeah? Okay, cool. Now, um, Okay, it, okay I, I have to catch up at the time. Now over here, um, uh, this is actually the content for the books, right? So in the books, we, um, we structure the book uh, according to a three separate chapter. Chapter one is reimagining uh, the nomadic lifestyle. So um, we are trying to, um, to, to rethink how the Baja people can live, you know, as a nomadic, uh, as a nomad again in within a current situation, right? So reimagining the nomad lifestyle. The chapter number two is reenacting the right to the ocean, right? So this is about um, a lot of proposal that pushing the boundary, uh, giving the right back to the people, you know, they have the right to the ocean, right? And the chapter three, rethinking Sabah and the Bajalau, right? So this is more into a common debate about the citizenship, about the right to the education, is about the children welfare, right? So um, looking into, um, the state ideology and also um, their relationship with the Bajalao, right? Okay. Now, so this is, um, you know, uh, we just, I just, you know, select some of the work reflecting um, the each chapter, right? So this is number one, uh, reimagining the nomadic lifestyle, right? Now, this is a, a very interesting project because one of the traditional craft and also, um, you know, is actually the tika. Uh, tika, we know that it's a mat, yeah, it's a traditional mat. So they are using the nipa leaf, yeah, the nipa leaf uh, to do a lot of waving, right? So a uh, baja, baja woman, uh, especially baja woman, are the expert of doing um, the, the, um, the nipa waving, yeah, the, the mat, 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 mat um, production, right? Over here, you can see that a lot of their, their pattern, right? The pattern of the, of the wave uh, pattern is very much relating to um, their, their relationship with the nature, right? So over here, they, they observe the kind of ombak, you know, uh, fish tail, uh, lobster, you know, all these are the elements that learn from the environment, right? So they translate uh, the object and into their waving pattern, yeah? So this is like very abstract and, and, and amazing, you know, 
uh, artworks um, the, that the people, yeah, the Baja woman uh, produce. And over here, this is just you know, a graphic that show you that uh, the usage of a uh, uh, map yeah, is actually various. Yeah? There are, there are uh, 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 various um, activities that also using the map, right? So say, say for example, there's a source of income, right? So people actually um, do the map and then sell as a, as a, as a product. But you know, scenes that the, the, the birth, you know, the people born, uh, wedding, uh, daily prayer, you know, or even um, during the burial times, right? So it's all associated with uh, the map, right? So the map is like really a daily um, object, but as well as something, uh, you know, embedded in their traditional uh, values, right? Now, so over here, one of the students, yeah, so now I'm starting going into the proposal. So one of the students actually explore the different uh, waving technique and trying to learn how can we translate uh, the ideas into an architecture proposal, yeah? So this is one of the amazing um, um, artwork that the, the student produced uh, by exploring a different technique uh, method and also, you know, the kind of skill and uh, try to manipulate into an architectural structure. Yeah? Uh, and also, you know, it's a tribute to the woman, right? The Baja women who are, who are a main, uh, who become, you know, their major um, source of income that they, they learn from, um, they, they, they produce the, you know, the map, yeah? So, um, so in this design studio, we actually uh, push our student to explore a different, uh, you know, you, you can, after, you know, you learn from, you know, the, the difficulty and also the lifestyle of the Bajalao, but over here, we, we encourage the student to look very carefully into a very partic a particular skill, right? Or a craftsman of the people, right? So they explore, they try to explore um, from the, you know, um, based on um, their lifestyle, yeah? So this is um, just um, one uh, simple example that uh, how people taking the waving technique and try to explore into a, into a translate into architecture proposal. Now over here, I will just um, now go through some of the, you know, uh, the proposal that the student made um, in, into here. Um, now, just now we talked about the boathouse, right? Now we know boathouse is a traditional uh, form of living. It's a vernacular house for the bachelor. But over here, uh, Lim Chun Han, uh, which is one of the students who are trying to reimagine a modern, a contemporary boathouse, right? So it's no longer, you know, that kind of lepa, lepa, yeah, but it's, it's actually a, a modern house, right? So um, yeah, I just, uh, you know, uh, uh, browse through some of the um, images. Now over here, uh, the idea is that uh, all these uh, moving houses, right, uh, is also responding to the environmental challenge, you know, because one of the issues that we know is the, is the ocean trust, right? A lot of rubbish, you know, in the, in the ocean. So um, what Jun Han proposed is that, uh, why not, you know, the Bajalao people, because since they are the master of the sea, right? So uh, another additional uh, function for the boathouse is actually helping to collecting the ocean trust, right? So, um, so meaning that they, they, can, they can actually collecting the trusses from the ocean and then back to the center, yeah? So over here, you can see it's a recycling center where the people can actually bring back, you know, the trusses and in return, um, the government, you know, or the local council can actually uh, 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 pay, you know, the budget of people with a certain daily product, you know, um, you know, like food, a chain of food, and also uh, can also be a, a form of uh, money, right? So, like, say, for example, um, you know, how, how much trust they actually collected. Yeah, so this is a very interesting proposal um, by looking at, you know, a modern, uh, uh, you know, a modern uh, boathouse uh, structure, right? And that is all with a kinetic, uh, like using the wind power instead of, you know, the, the petrol. Right, so it, it's also be more sustainable um, for the for the budget people, right? So over here, you know, say for example, um, you know, the budget people were, were collecting the trusses and then come to the recycling center and then you know um, to do you know uh, all the uh, all the recycling work. So it is they are very active part of the society who are solving the environmental problem as well. Yeah. So um, this is amazing drawing. Yeah, a very subtle drawing. Uh, you know, almost like very minimalist, um, very monochrome, yeah. But um, the, 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 the details, right, paying to the structure and the, to the spaces, right, to the, to the spaces are, are, are quite amazing, right. Okay, yeah, so another uh, long section showing that how 
um, the recycling center uh, actually work, right? So there are different sections um, to operate the, 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 the process. Okay, now the other, um, <coughs> um, the other proposal is from uh, Wan Chun Hong, right? So this one, as we know, uh, the animistic uh, belief of the Baja Laut are very uh, are the, an integral part of their of their everyday life, right? Um, now, of course, um, uh, what Jun Hong are trying to make you know a speculate an idea is that um, this is a modern um, ship, you know, it's like a community uh, tower, it's a floating structure, right? So because we know that the people uh, who are you know constantly moving to the Philippines, you know. Uh, this is also part of their ritual, right? So they have to uh, go back to the ancestor land and then to, you know, to do a certain ritual performance to the, to the ancestor, right? Um, so um, this structure, right? This floating structure who will actually acting as a community center, but also allow the people to move, um, you know, from Sapa to Philippines, right? In a, in a collective way, right? Uh, rather than, you know, a small, a small lefa boat house, but it's actually become uh, a big structure. Yeah. So over here, uh, Chun Hong, you know, trying to understand the ritual, right? The ritual of the people, what kind of per performance, you know, what kind of uh, needs, right? For, 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 for them, right? So over here, he also explore a different uh, floating structure, right? So um, how to make the kind of, um, you know, a structure who accommodate uh, the activities, but also can, can float, right? Can float by using the, um, the wind, right? Yeah, so this is um, some of the drawing um, who ultimately, you know, come up with three options who are also using, uh, say for example, this one is using a pontoon, a pontoon structure, right? So it's a floating structure. And over here is, is learning like from a ship structure, right? Yeah, so these are some of the modern way of reimagining the nomadic lifestyle, yeah? Okay, yeah, so this is another uh, question. Yeah, so over here you can see, you know, uh, the kind of ritual, performance, like, you know, the dancers, uh, you know, all happening in this, like, a tower, right? A floating tower. Okay. Yeah, so this second one. Now, so uh, quickly into a chapter number two, reenacting the right to the ocean. Yeah. Now, over here, uh, Jared Yap um, is, um, is, is putting a, a proposal that trying to, um, to fight, you know, for the people about their right to the ocean. Yeah. So in this uh, proposal, uh, Jared is using, um, you know, uh, abandoned uh, ship, yeah, abandoned ship, uh, and then to recreate the autonomous city, right, um, by modifying um, some of the spaces and the structure and adding, you know, a new structure on the abandoned um, wreck, yeah, the, the ship. Um, so now over here, there's a, there's a video. So I will, I will play the video. I think it's, it's much interesting to look at the animation. In the midst of coastal town, there live Orang Bajau where statelessness kicked away the stepping stone. The stepping stone for them to gain recognition for citizenship. With the political restrictions toward the land and sea, they felt as though they are kept in a huge invisible bubble. They want to get rid of this sedentary lifestyle. That's where Autonomous city speculates a hypothetical future of which they create their own kingdom to preserve traditional way of life, to preserve culture, and to, and to generate resources. One morning, Jago, the master of sea, and four of his accompanies sneak into the land of Sabahan, trying to butter for resources. Soon, one of them have been caught. They have no choice but to leave him and run back to where they belong. Frequency inserted their hearings, 
the frequency turn into a language that they understand for the reason of they always believe in sea spirit. The fish spoke. It gave them quests that could be ever-changing. But first, they must seek for one thing, and that is freedom. They started their first ever motorboat and began with the journey. Soon, they discover a huge boat with a dent on the front end, floating along the coast. With curiosity, they dive to find out that it seems to be a collision back then. 200 souls were trapped in the sunken boat. They used all their strength to break the weak point of the hull and led the Deem Knight to be the guide for the souls to freedom. With the material in hand, Jago realized that these are the materials that the land people would send to scrap yard or abandon once it is decommissioned. The water surface draws a line of mirror. Jago realized that nomadism is the freedom that they are seeking for. Jago had a vision of which looks at adaptive reuse of the abandoned boat that serve as a platform for their social and cultural aspects. But they need to study the structure of the ship through dismantling the shell and reusing it to create their desired spaces. They utilize the spaces in their traditional lepa lepa onto the ship to create a more comfortable and united architecture. On their way back, they collected all the ocean debris as to form the materials of the buildings. But before they adapt, they start thinking about the space planning in relation to the proportion of their houseboat in details with a few considerations. For example, the space distribution, the height consideration, the weight balancing, the visibility and ventilation. They slowly attach themselves onto the ship with their traditional house building method called Nakba'an Ba'an, which means process of clustering. It will slowly evolve into a city of bricolage, where slums are formed onto the ship like barnacles, covering most part of the ships with Bajau state houses, creating a reminiscence of the Bajau. Because it's an old shipwreck, a dilapidated buoyant mansion breaks the time limbo reminding the age of the Bajau. There are times when they need water and sometimes don't need it. In this case, Bajau's houses are built on a higher level, leaving all the activities to the proximity of the water. Subatan di bila santang Paboko kami kalana luang Elamu intang ku indi pasang The bajau depends solely on the rainwater for consuming Therefore, this is to improve rainwater collection. And to improve further, they created a platform for traditional solar desalination which used ocean debris to create a simple dish for evaporation. A mangrove nursery is important as they use it to create more lepa lepa and most of the wooden architectural elements so they can preserve their culture. The seaweed farming is to build, to encourage and improve their health. They are the natural wood artisans and iron smith themselves. They are capable of creating and repairing like what they always do.
the green pocket that attracts the viewers from where they have started. Built with non-insulated wooden planks, keeping the authenticity of acoustic sense of Fajal. Looking up where the path of origin is situated, boats are hung as though they are floating on an invisible water medium, making this wide space an underwater experience for the people searching for the right fish to sacrifice. The Bacha children quick adapt to a whole new environment but without losing any of their true identity, having sea as their playground, as always. Yago Poposo is able to free one of his accompanies that got caught, but he couldn't make it. But his idea proves that Orang Bajau, the sea gypsies having no identity, is a form of unique identity, and that they adapt to regenerate their culture, not losing it. Because if we don't start preserving the culture, then they will lose it bit by bit until they lose it forever. Okay, great. Right. So now I, I hope that this video is, is kind of reflecting um, to what I meant by narrative, right? Now, in any uh, architecture proposal, it's always important to curate, to create your own narrative of the proposal, right? Narrative is a storytelling, is a way that how do you imagining, how do you putting themselves and also the character, right, into the proposal. So in this, in this, uh, in, in general proposal, is imagining that ja um, Jago, right? Jago is a, is a sea master. And how ja ja uh, Jago is trying to preserving, to saving, you know, his family and the community by, you know, reusing or readapting um, abandoned, uh, you know, a ship into a new kind of, um, you know, a floating city, right? Yeah. So, so what beauty about uh, Jared's proposal is a narrative, right? It's a narrative that, um, putting, you know, a storyline uh, behind your proposal, right? So, um, yeah, I, I hope that this is something, uh, you know, give you uh, some inspiration uh, for your project too, right? Now, um, I'm running out of time, uh, so let me quickly. So another one is like an underwater utopia, right? So uh, Fiona is trying to reimagine, yeah, you know, in the next um, two or 300 years uh, time when the sea level rise, you know, and our basically, you know, our our whole world is actually sunken, right? Uh, so we 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 are adapting to become an underwater creature, right? So every one of us are living in the underwater sea, right? So it's also a kind of narrative, right? Um, putting a case uh into into the future of the you know into the into into the human history, right? But not only the the bachelor, yeah. So over here. Um, he's, he's trying to preparing um, the how the people can actually adapting to the uh, you know to the underwater sea uh, living in the next like um, 300 years from now yeah so it, it's very speculative idea uh, but it's, uh, it's it's very interesting yeah okay so uh, the last chapter is um, rethinking Sabah and the Bajalau right now so over here we are trying to talk about the uh, especially on the children welfare and the right to the education yeah. Um, so Dennis uh, is, is putting a proposal um, 
that how you know the proposal is actually situated in the Sampona, the water village. And um, some of the idea is that um, that is a you know a very flexible structure uh, who enable a lot of activities, you know, uh, combining tourism, combining bookshop, combining, you know, a market. Um, you know, it's like a very flexible structure who can accommodate a various uh, activities between uh, Baja Laut and uh, the non-Baja Laut, right? So it's becoming a center for the people to learn about the culture, right? And also for the Baja people who are gathered together, um, you know, to, to, you know to, to become, you know, as a community, right? Because currently uh, what happened in, the, in Samporna, there's no uh, infrastructure um, yet actually to, to provide a space um, for the people to come together, right? So this is, um, this is one of the uh, proposal, right? Now, uh, so next one, uh, Jian, Wong Jian is uh, trying to looking at the uh, boat uh, making, right? A boat uh, making factory who are trying to um, introduce, um, you know, bring back the Lepa culture. And, um, and so this is a proposal where, you know, it, it's kind of imagining a mass production, a production of the of the of the boat, right? Of the of, of the boat house, right? So over here, um, it's also become a tourism um, center where you know people come to learn about the the, the boat culture and interact with uh, the community, right? So lastly, um, this one uh, Yi Chen is um, is very much focusing on legalization of the marketplace, right? Um, so because. Um, now we know that the budget people, they don't have the right to do business, right? So they, they often, um, you know, uh, pressured by the middleman. Uh, so they, they, they cannot really access to the, to the mainstream uh, market, right? So why not? Um, we can imagine that, you know, this is like an uh, uh, imagine license, right? A license that allow the people to do the free trade, right? Uh, uh, free trade and small businesses. Uh, within the community, right? So they 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 don't really exploit it by the middleman, but they can they can you know they can actually uh interact with the be part of the market player, right? Um. So in this proposal, uh, Yi Qian is trying to you know introduce um a marketplace, right? Uh, where the all the you know the people they can uh do all the selling, you know, buying activities uh that happen um within their water village, right? Um. So there's like the kind of uh water market, right, um, that, that, that come together, right, so now I will end the, the you know, the, the presentation uh, by showing this slide, so this is uh, one of the poets um, that written by Bonnie Conrad, um, the NGO, and I, I found it, it's really conclude uh, the vision and the imagination for the Bajal uh, as a whole, right, so over here we can read it, um, see, see its life from knowledge to substances, Human divide with border, but the Bajalao embrace the sea with their uni uh, universe. Get sea and smart with incomparable wisdom of the sea, dive like a fish, the unique human being, the guardian of the sea, right? So with this, you know, um, it's really truly our humble contribution, you know, with this book and the design studio. Uh, we, we do not think that, you know, this will bring immediate impact um, to the community, but at least, you know, as a school of architecture, as a researcher, as a as a lecturer and student, we are you know we are putting together the 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 you know this this proposal and trying to generate um an active dialogue you know with politician, uh, with policymaker, right, with a business partner, NGO activists who try you know to to actually um, give us a new perspective, right, looking at the um, you know the old problems of Bajalaut. yeah. So um, now with that. Um, now, if some of you are you know, interested to learn more about the project, uh, you can load to Linktree uh, slash uh, Bajalao, uh, Bajalautopia. Uh, we have uh, the Instagram and also we have um, um, the Facebook page uh, for the books, right? So uh, please uh, follow uh, the, 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 the page because um, uh, the book, it wasn't the end of the story because we are still continuing some collaboration with the community. So um, there will be a forthcoming activities, um, you know, to continue uh, the dialogue and also the project. Right now, over here, I should also introduce um, uh, Farah Aliza, architect Farah Aliza. Uh, so both of us are the editor of the book, and um, the young man that behind me is uh, Chun Hong. Right, so Chun Hong has been very helpful. Uh, he's uh, he was our student. Right, he was the one that really um, supporting the books. Right, um, uh, preparing the book uh, uh, layout and everything. Right now, so with that, I think uh, I shall end there.
um, yeah, welcome your comment and, and question for a discussion. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kang. Uh, I think it's uh, time for uh, any questions. Any question for, from the audience? Yeah, you can type in the chat box if you are shy to ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, or you, you, you can, you know, I, I would prefer, you know, you speak to me and yeah, we can, we can discuss, right? Yeah, I think, I think that uh, your material is very interesting. Actually, we, we uh, only expect it to be some, something like documentation of the mm. budget things, but it, instead we got more from that, mm. <laughs> which is actually the classic problem from our student is uh, how to connect uh, the history uh, or right. history of architecture or vernacular architecture to to the design studio mm. <laughs> so i think that's, yeah that, uh, that, I, I totally agree uh, it was always you know um, um about the translation right the translation of yes. um, your knowledge uh, what you learn from the history or the theory and how you're making a proposal that responding to that. Um, yeah, um, I, I'm sure that, that there's no, you know, a direct so solution or, you know, um, uh, to that. But um, so back to, back to um, you know, if you remember back to the one of the principle or really, you know, a proposition that we take very strongly in this project is that we do not perceive vernacular as a static, um, yes. you know, as something romantic uh, feature, yeah. but we are trying to, you know, uh, pushing, uh, you know, the definition and the usage uh, of, the, of the people. Uh, so you're putting the people first, right? Uh, not the architecture, but the architecture so, should be something to celebrate, um, you know, to, to advance the knowledge, right? Um, um, to, to support the people, right? So if you take that um, principle um, at, the, at the first stand, I think it's important, um, you know, people will, 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 you know, will start with a lot of creative ideas, uh, uh, you know, responding to the to the culture yeah. and, and et cetera, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think it's great. I think that's uh, its main problem in Indonesia usually, because we, we tend to romanticize, romanticize the vernacular architecture, mm. or what we call traditional architecture, that means that it won't change. Right. And so <laughs> we can't really use it in design studio because of that. <laughs> yeah. By focusing more on the, on the people maybe uh, uh before we we invited uh johannes we yeah sure Good. and he said something about the soul wow not the form but the soul i think it's the same actually it's the same yeah. as the the one that you mentioned so we actually focusing on the same yeah uh, on the people on the soul yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's true you know because when we always refer you know we, we listen to the term like a sense of place you know uh yeah. sense of you know um sense of place right um what does it mean is, is uh, we always impose a certain, uh, you know, that, that kind of uh, assumption, right? And also yes. our own judgment into a certain uh, cultural group or society. But we are, we, we should actually, um, you know, um, now sometimes, you know, uh, also ironically, because architects tend to be, you know, have a professional standing, right? And in a society, we always, you know, regarded as an elite, you know, the kind of professional elite, you are an architect. Now, which yeah. is fine. There's nothing wrong about the title, about, you know, the status of, your, of, of, the, of the profession. But of course, you know, um, it couldn't be something um, hold you back because if you are, uh, if you see yourself as someone, uh, you know, you, you know everything, right? You thought, you know, you know everything, yeah. uh, you can protect the people, you know. Uh, so that is something, something, um, something become imbalanced, right? Because you are not working, you are not seeing the problem from the perspective of the people, right? So you are not putting yourself into their shoes, right? Um, so it's important to go back to the root of the people, respecting the people values, uh, and also working together, right? Um, uh, so by recognizing their challenges, right? By like recognizing the limitation that they, they face, and also, you know, to remind ourselves that um, the people are changing, right? The the constantly changing. But the the, the change uh, over here is it doesn't mean that the the loss of the value, right? Uh, change doesn't mean that they they forgot or they disregard 
uh, they don't respect their, their tradition or you know, the value, no. It's actually, um, they are transforming into a, a new form of uh, doing the ritual, right? So say for example, uh, over here, um, you, you will, just now you, know, you will see that uh, many students, they take the lepa lepa, the boathouse, into a different scale, right? So, um, so whether they, they reimagine into a floating structure or they are trying to reuse the, the abandoned ship, you know, making into another, you know, a big, uh, like a floating city. So these are all the new interpretation, right? So, but, uh, but, but you know, at the, at the bottom line, this proposal are still very much respecting the culture, the ritual of the people. But it just, um, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a structural terms, right? And, and in terms of the architectural imagi imagination, it can actually go beyond that, right? It can, yeah. it can, it can give a lot of new definition to that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Is there any question or comments? Students are always shy. Oh, okay, that's one. Hi, Debbie. Hi, um, good morning. My name is Hi. Leila Yuni. I'm an architecture, junior architecture student. Right. Uh, if I'm allowed to respond to your um, uh, to your opinion just now mm -hmm. um, about the culture, but causes shift changes from primordial oral culture to culture of the written word cause um, to human consciousness and memory. Mm. Thank you. Uh, sorry, sorry, I, I lost you. Uh... Are you making a statement or a, a question? Um, a question about um, what caused shift changes from primordial culture to mm. culture of the written word caused to human consciousness and memory. Uh, now, if I understand your question correctly, um, now you are you are trying to say that um, the the change of culture is also impacted or related to the memory of the people, right? Yeah, so how the primary or, you know, the indigenous culture uh, actually uh, change over time. Now, I, I think it's a difficult question, but uh, thank you so much for, for that. Now, I, I don't have immediate uh, question to that, but if I may to respond to that. Now, yes, um, we have to, now, if you, if you see the culture, it's actually there are many layers of culture. Now, one of the, um, you know, all those, you know, all, say for example, all of us are the Bajalao, right? So we are, we are within a community. Now, I'm sure that all those that we are, we are within the same culture, but the way that we interpret the culture, that's also different, right? So as you, as you pointed uh, uh, rightly, it's about the memory of the people. It's about my own experience uh, with the culture, right? Uh, now, that culture could be actually different from different family or different individual, right? Because I, and, I entangle the culture uh, with my different perspective and, and the memory. So that also at, a, you know, at, at, at one very single layer where memory you know, is, is becoming like, you know, so that's why you know, sometimes people do oral history, uh, they interview people you know, to collect some individual's um, uh, ideas right, about, uh, about the particular heritage or the thing. So that is important, right? So you respect every single individual in terms of their own memory, right? Now, um, so what we can do is that if you take that personal memory seriously and you translate that into a narrative, right? So back to my point that creating a narrative is very important, right? Now, so say, for example, for, for the case of Jared, yeah, and the, the, uh, 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 the autonomous uh, city, um, he, he, he tried to imagine himself as the sea master, right? As a, uh, as a Jaro, right? So um, by putting yourself into a character of the, of the particular people or within the, the community, you are trying to see things, you know, from your, 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 your characteristic, right? You have your own personality, you have your responsibility, right? So that, that is become very interesting, right? So you take, you can even like take, you know, a personal identity into the construction, right? into the, 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 the narrative construction as a whole, right? Now, of course, um, yeah, so that is important. But of course, you can, you can, you can, at the same time, you can, you can unpack, you can unpack the, the concept of, of culture uh, in a many different ways, right? So you can, um, so culture also refer to a collective memory, right? So it's not individual collective, uh, individual memory is a collective memory. So as a whole, as a, as a, you know, maybe as a, as a, as a whole kampong, you know, as a whole village, as a whole family, right? So there's many layers, uh, the, the way that how do you interpret um, you know a similar a same 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 package of culture 
Right. So yeah. So thanks for the question. I think uh yeah, it, it's really a matter uh looking at different scale, right? A different scale of culture or heritage at a different particular level, right? Yeah, I I I hope I I I I, I answer your question, right? Thank you for the answer. All right, thanks, Devi. Okay, we still have time for one more question. Yep. Several feet. Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, hello, Kang. Hi, hello, hi, hi. Yeah. How should I? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Thank you for the, your pre uh, presentation. Yeah, no worry. I think with per, uh, presentation, uh, nice book uh, <laughs> and <Thank> nice you. <laughs> picture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in your opinion, uh, vernacular architecture in Bajau, uh, how how can they develop their their architecture? Uh, uh, or, or how to survive their uh, their art sector mm. uh, uh, is the first my question and and the second uh, in many in many traditional people uh, there are there are problem to to communicate uh, with with the government uh, and and uh, and uh, a problem with their environment. Uh, so, uh, in your op opinion, uh, how how can they they survive uh, their environment environmental? Eh? Wow! Thank you so yeah. much. Right, yeah. it's such yeah. an important question. Thank yeah. you. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's such a, a important question because now back to the reality, right? Because you know, afterward, you know, forget about the books. You know, when you get back to the reality, you still have to solve the issue that communication, you know, how getting the things done, right? Now, um, over here, I can only show, uh, share my knowledge, you know, with this uh, particular project, you know, but I'm sure that there are many other uh, solutions can be done. Um, so one of the thing is to improve communication. Now, certainly, now, definitely, you know, many of the Baja people, they don't even speak Malay, right? Um, but of, you know, a, a basic Malay, um, you know, Basa Malaysia, they can speak like a basic Malay, but many of them actually speak Bajau language, you know, they are indigenous uh, vernacular language, right? So yeah, exactly. They are very difficult in terms of the communication. But unfortunately, I think there are many groups of NGO who are, you know, say for example, like Borneo Comrade, um, who are really working very hard with some of the international organization, you know, um, like, you know, I know, you know, some of the other colleagues uh, working with, um, uh, UNICEF, right, uh, or some of the UN, UN uh, agency who are really putting up the case and, um, you know, bring that into the parliament, uh, uh, trying to have a dialogue with the government. Now, the process, I would say, is not easy. It's not straightforward. Um, there's many challenges, right? Uh, but what we can do, you know, especially, you know, even you look at as a school, right, as a, as a school, as a university, we also have a role to play, right? So say for example, in this example, we bring the student, do the project, and um, you know, in the, in the next step, we are, we are also bring the book, you know, I, I'll, be, I'll be visiting uh, Sabah soon. So we will also bring the book, you know, um, you know maybe you know, meeting some of the, of the parliament member, uh, some of the politician, right? Um, to start the dialogue, right? So, um, so, so yeah, exactly. So I, I don't think like, because they are, they are inability, you know, to, 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 to communicate, um, you know, with the people, so we acting as a bridge, right? So we are bridging, um, you know, the community with the government. So of course that is one way, right? Um, that how how we can how how we can do that. Now, um, your your another question is regarding, um, how the people can actually sustain the the culture, right? Because it's very challenging, right? It's very challenging. Um, now of course I, I'm sure that not only happened to Bajalau. If you talk to many of this marginalized group of people, um. Their main issue is not the tradition, it's how to get the lunch for the next day. They don't yeah. even can survive their life, right? They don't even can provide food for their, for, the, for their children. So they don't even care about what the culture or the tradition yeah. is. It's a matter of life, right? How, how they can actually live, right? So, so it's very, you know, it's the, it's, so we cannot really romanticize the issue because ultimately, you have to get back to the reality, you know, how to improve their economic income, 
how to provide welfare to the people, right? Now, so, um, so uh, my response to your question is that um, now definitely we have to solve very fundamental, uh, you know, a living, you know, how to make living for the people at, 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 the, at the, you know, a very first um, level. Now, uh, if, get, if, if, if talking about the Baja Laut, um, now they are still having uh, some way to, to make a living, you know, because all those that are, they, are, they, they actually are, you know, uh, are stateless, right? But many times, very often, uh, the, the Sabah government actually do not really interrupt, right? Because they have been living in the region for, you know, for uh, over a century, right? Now, that, uh, so people know that they are, they are around, right? So as long as they are not making any like, uh, uh, problems, right? Uh, so the, the police normally don't catch them, right? Don't, 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 don't really get them, right? So, so, so what happened over there is that the, the budget law, they, they still can get, you know, to some of the like a factory job, you know, some, some local job. Um, but of course, uh, the pay, right? The, the salary, the, the, the wages, um, uh, uh, the pay for them, is rather unfair, you know, because some of the uh, employer would actually exploit it, you know, um, to to give a very minimum uh, salary for for this yeah. group of people because they are, you know, illegal. They cannot complain to the government. Yeah. So um, so this is also another issue that how to provide um, a basic uh, welfare and um, you know uh, at least you know not equal opportunity at least opportunity right uh, to the people to make a living right. Now, um, so that I think is beyond, definitely is beyond the role of architects, right? So uh, we, we cannot really solve that issue as a social issue, but, but um, I, 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 I do believe that the fundamental levels of living, right, um, is important, right? So if you can, can sustain, uh, the people can, can sustain their life, can have a stable life, right? So gradually um, we can actually, uh, you know, bring the, the people together and to, to, to start doing certain, you know, um, a, a conservation project or a certain education, right? Now, another approach is very important to educate the young kids, the children, right? So what uh, amazing about Borneo Comrade doing is that they are focusing on uh, children education, right? Because they see the future of Bajalau is on the children, is on the new generation, right? Um, now, so when you can educate the, the kids, right, the, the, the children, and give a lot of support opportunity to the to the children. So when they grow up, of course, you know, definitely they they become, you know, um, you know, they, they will become a, a strong force, right? To really uh, protect the community, the culture, right? So another another way is, is really, you know, have to focus on the new generation, the younger generation, and uh, to to make them aware of their, you know, their 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 very you know beautiful culture. At the same time, you know, to, to empower, right, to empower um, the, the children so they can, they can have a better access to the resources and, you know, hopefully, you know, in future when they grow up, they will be, you know, a really um, a key player uh, in the society then, right, yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you, Ken. Yeah, so yeah. so uh, we can get lesson learned from them, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Uh, what, we yeah. can learn a lot from them. Yeah, there are okay. so many yeah. we can learn from them. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, because it, it's, it's a lot of mis misunderstanding, right? Because um, they always, you know, projected as, you know, a certain kind of image, you know, to the society. So people have certain prejudice, uh, misunderstanding on this group of people, right? Um, yeah, so the, the, the intention of the book is actually, you know, hopefully, you know, we, we, are, we are give more positive, you know, Images to the back to the society yeah. and um and important you know it's a hope right it's a it's a utopia yeah. hope right um uh that the, the change can actually be be you know um to be to be made right okay cool All right. okay okay so talk about what I think it's internet yeah. Resist. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think we we run you out. Can. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think we run out of time now. <laughs> it's already Yeah, possible. yeah, no. Yeah, it's okay. already uh, I, I wish we still have more time because uh, it's such a very interesting uh, topic, you know. And I really think that uh, we as in academia, we have some responsibility to pay back to the society yeah, that's exactly. uh, to be 
the agency. I think you are now the agency of Bajok. <laughs> no, I, I am humbly, you know, just a small part of it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but definitely, yes. yes. Uh, as an academia, as a university, I think we have a bigger roles, right? Um, back to the yeah. society. Yeah, that, that yes. is important. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate what, what you do for Bajok. Yeah. I heard that the some money from the book comes to Bajok. Uh, or... the, sorry? I think they, the book is for uh, some some revenue for for the budget people. Oh uh, yeah, because yeah. we are doing the fundraising, right? So yeah, fundraising. Uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, it's hundred percent the profit that we we gain from the book sales. Uh, we are donate to the uh Bonnie Comrade. So it's a hundred percent uh uh uh, uh non profit publication. Yeah, meaning we are collecting the the uh the funding, right? Uh, now do do let me know uh, if you know some of the students you are interested about the book. Maybe I can collect the book together and then make a postage, um, uh, like a collection, uh, like one postage um, to to your school. Yeah, perhaps yeah. Uh, yeah so do let me good. know. <laughs> because I found that that the postage is very very high. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no worry. Uh, now now I I can have a you know a personal a chat with you. Uh, we can we can <laughs> talk about that later if you are interested on on, on that. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you. I think. Right, uh, thank you. Yeah, we already ran out of time. And, yeah, sure. Uh, thank okay, you. Okay. So good luck. Uh, good luck to all the students. Uh, I know yes. that you are also completing your studio work, right? So I look forward, you know, perhaps uh, to seeing your work in future. Uh, but yeah, all the best in your study. And remember, remember, you are all the future generation of architect. You are. You play a very important role in Indonesian society and also a global society, right? So um, yeah, please, you know, really fight for. Uh, a more equal, um, a dom dom uh, democratic society, you know, um, to really value the people, you know, the society as a whole, right? So I, I wish all of you uh, all the best and also, you know, uh, a great job for all the academic staff. Um, you know, I, I wish um, we can have other kind of collaboration in future. Oh, yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you very bye. much. Bye. Okay. You. Bye. Take care, everyone. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Wafi. Yeah. Maaf, yeah. uh, supaya open video sebentar untuk di Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, udah hilang. Iya, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, ngomong baik. Yang kita aja. Nah, Silahkan okay. buka kamera sebentar untuk di capture ketua kelas masing-masing. Pada ketua kelas masing-masing, silakan mengcapture untuk berita acara perkuliahan. Jadi hari ini ada dua presensi ya, presensi OCW, lalu presensi yang di share Angela tadi. Presensi untuk kuliah tamunya. Silakan, semua mahasiswa. Atau Indonesia sudah mengkap. Ya, Oke, okay, ini ya. Sudah, Pak. Oke, okay, terima kasih. Terima kasih, Bobi. Ya. Tidak bisa saya sebut satu-satu. Ada alumni juga, Pak Sigmawan dari UB, Pak Yus, Pak Yus Wadi dari Unpar. Terima kasih, Pak Yus. Dan yang lain. Ya, ya Bobi, terima kasih. Selamat siang semuanya, Bu Maya, Pak Fauzan. Uh, dan seluruh mahasiswa, uh, terima kasih atas atensinya untuk kuliah tamu hari ini. Bermanfaat, dan saya pikir materi dari Ken 
hari ini begitu luar biasa ya untuk menggugah kita bahwa ada sisi lain dari dari masyarakat tradisi kita ya yang hidup di di laut gitu dan ini saya pikir juga hal yang tidak atau jarang kita bahas ya ada saudara kita yang yang hidup di di laut gitu dan itu itu merupakan sebuah keniscayaan untuk berkembang sebagai satu bagian dari masyarakat Nusantara. Begitu sekali lagi terima kasih Bu Ovi dan semua mahasiswa dan semua partisipan yang telah memberikan atensinya. Selamat siang. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.